Hi guys! So I'm struggling with the last vestiges of the one o'clock light <laughs> in order to film my monthly reading wrap up and these are the six books that I read in November so I will just get straight into it shall I? I have three physical books here to show you so I'll start with those and this is actually the first book I did read this month and it is There Once Lived a Woman Who Tried to Kill Her Neighbour's Baby Scary Fairy Tales by Ludmilla Petrushka. Looks like that. This is a Penguin Modern Classic, really gorgeous. And there's actually three books in this series, um, all collections of short stories by the same author published in this style by Penguin Modern Classics. And I do intend on getting the other two because I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four out of five stars. I'm not sure if these are based on traditional fairy tales or Russian fairy tales I'm just not aware of. I didn't recognise a lot of fairy tales in there, I, I think they're new fairy tales, at least to me they were new fairy tales, and they are all set in the 1900s onwards, none of them are set in a kind of like medieval-esque setting, but they were amazing, they were very dark, and they reminded me a lot of Roald Dahl's adult short stories, if you've read any of those, and I really think you'll enjoy this if you enjoyed those, um, just really enjoyed this book, there was just some like real wowzers in here. A couple I was less keen on. Honestly, I think this book is encroaching on a 4.5 stars for me. Um, really, really enjoyed it. I then have two books of poetry here. Both are very short and the first is Don Patterson's 40 Sonnets. I really like Don Patterson. He is one of my favourite poets. He's a Scottish poet. And this is the latest release of his um, poetry. This one started off a little bit slow for me. The first couple of poems I was a bit like, oh, is this, is this what I'm getting? Because I know I liked Don Patterson, so I was a little bit disappointed. But after the first few poems, I fell in love, especially the second half of this collection were just beautiful. They were very emotive and just really struck a chord with me and I really enjoyed them. A lot of these poems deal with everyday life or have political themes in them and they were just fantastic. Really, really enjoyed this and would highly recommend Don Patterson as a poet. Um, now the next is more of a selection of po performance poems um, written by the poet Benjamin Zephaniah and this is his little book of vegan poems and this is a, just a tiny little book and like I said he's a performance poet. His and Don Patterson's poetry have quite different styles. This has a lot more of a beat and a rhythm and it really really benefits from being read out loud I find um, Benjamin Zephaniah's poetry. I would definitely search his name on YouTube as well because there's some like videos of him performing his poetry which are amazing. Really enjoyed this little collection and one of the poems in particular you'll have heard me read in my monthly favourites so I'll link that down below. Um, this may offend you if you eat meat but um, I mean there's some, I'm not a vegan <laughs> and I wasn't offended by some of the poems that emphasised the vegan lifestyle but I think if you are a vegetarian or vegan you will really enjoy this. Now the next book I read was on my Kindle and it was a children's book kind of verging on the YA. This was a very dark children's book, there was some quite violent scenes in it so I don't know if that makes it young adult, I'm not sure. But it was by Isabella Lendy and it is The City of Beasts which is actually the first of a series although you could definitely read this as a standalone. It wasn't a cliffhanger and shit thinking oh my gosh what's going to happen next, it was a full and complete story in itself. Although I might still check out the next books in the series. It basically follows a young boy called Alexander whose mother is sick and he has to go and live with his grandmother. Now his grandmother is a journalist, a travel journalist, and quite an eccentric woman and she takes Alex to the Amazon in search of a strange beast that has, there's been reported sightings of and they get into a lot of danger and there's lots of political intrigue and interactions with native people of the Amazon. It just deals with some very heavy themes but at the same time it's just an incredibly imaginative magic realism children's book with some really beautiful scenes in there, just some imagery and worlds that Isabel Lindy has created which really blew me away and I know I would have adored this book uh, when I was younger and I did enjoy it now so I would recommend it. Now the next book I've already filmed a review of so that will be up in a couple of days and it is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Now this I listened to an audiobook, um, I downloaded it from Audible and it was read by the author herself which I think was really nice. I really like when audiobooks are read by the author, especially when it's like this book which is this kind of non-fiction biography style. It's basically about embracing inspiration and finding your inspiration as a writer and a creative person and I, I enjoyed some of it. Didn't enjoy other bits of it but like I said I've done a whole review so I don't want to talk about it too much here because I will just 
it's difficult to sum up in a small small space so like I said there's going to be a review of that. And the last book I read this month was the third book in the JWW Wells series by Tom Holt which was Earth, Air, Fire and Custard and this is a fantasy series set in London where um, our main character Paul goes to work at a firm that turns out to be run by magical creatures like goblins and wizards etc etc and it turns out he too uh, was, was kind of born with um, some magical gifts. This is a comedy series, it's a comic fantasy series. I loved the first one. Did really enjoy the second one after a slow start. Now the third one was a bit disappointing compared to the other two. I still enjoyed it and there were still laugh out loud moments for me and I'm glad I read it because I enjoyed the series. Um, so it was really good to read what was basically the conclusion of Paul's story. But it was the plot of this one was all over the place. Like it was a mess, the plot. Um, so yeah, definitely disappointing as the series goes. Wouldn't say I didn't enjoy it, but if this had been the first one, I would never have continued on with the series. But it doesn't change my opinion on the first in the series, The Portable Door, which was one of my favourite books this year. <laughs> but that's it. That's everything I read this month. I'm going to go before it's pitch black in here. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Until tomorrow, guys. Bye.